Welcome to Caskets and Cocktails, Memoirs of a Cemetery Dude. Get ready for a hilarious dive into the world of death care where cemetery industry veteran Mr. Danny and his daughter Katie will answer all those crazy questions you've been dying to ask. Go ahead and pour yourself a drink, pull up a rocking chair and get ready for some laughs because we guarantee Caskets and Cocktails will be the last ones to let you down. I'm Danny Faulkner. I'm her daddy. And welcome to Caskets and Cocktails. I'm excited about it. Are you excited or are you angry? No, I thought I was excited. <laughs> well, you can't tell the difference with his voice. <laughs> well, the only reason why I'm asking if you're angry is because that is our theme today. It's all about angry. I've always wanted a theme. Yeah, I mean, we do themes sometimes. Where oh. have you been? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was asleep. Yeah. <laughs> but we um, got several questions about anger. Huh. Now, I'm your daughter. I yes. grew up in your house. I noticed that. I really that's know how I, to... <laughs> that's where I knew you from. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, I really know how to make you angry. I did it a lot when I was a teenager. Yes, you did. You did it. Why? Just to aggravate me? I guess. Or just see if you could? Or what? Probably a combination of both. Well, you did a good job. Yeah. My, I, I, and this might be shocking, but sometimes I get angry. No, not you. I know. Shocking. Not, not the angel of the side. I know. My my husband says I'm sweet right up until the second I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to talk to him. Not, you're not supposed to say that in front of you. Exactly. Well, we have a question, and it came in from Devin in Massachusetts. Really? I can barely say that. Can they they listen to us in Massachusetts? I guess. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I guess they don't have anything to do. It snows. Well, so that's they just true. kind of sit around. And say, you want to listen to a podcast and drink yeah. some beer and drink. Okay, let's move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, he had a question. He or she, I guess, had a question, and they want to know: Have we? Have you ever experienced something that kind of tickled you? like a funny angry scenario does that make sense like yeah. you've seen somebody angry and it makes you laugh or oh, something yeah. along that line yeah yeah, yeah. you want to tell us about it uh well, well just this past week as a matter of fact really yeah just this past week uh where i work is what's called a combo mm-hmm. or a combination outfit it's funeral home and has a cemetery. Mm-hmm. We got a pretty nice size cemetery. Yeah. We bury about 800 people a year in this one cemetery. And so that's, I mean, on a yeah. national scale, that's a fairly decent size yeah. operation. Uh, and so this couple came in, and all, all of my family service counselors were all busy with other people and working on projects and things yeah. of that nature. And so I just fill in. Uh, with the public mm-hmm. when they need my help. so Or if someone comes in and requests an autograph, has that happened yet? N- not that many times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, this couple comes in, and they're wanting to find some spaces. Her parents were buried, and they had some additional spaces, and they wanted the spaces. Mm-hmm. So I took them down to the cemetery. And... Uh, we were walking around, and, and I found the spaces, uh-huh. and the lady says, uh, you've got weeds all in the cemetery. I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, you need to do something about these weeds. Uh-huh. And I said, well, ma'am, you may not be aware of it, but in, in last year was the second wettest year on record. Oh, my gosh. And out of the first 60 days of this year, it's rained 45 days. Yeah. Leaves a little, very little room for... uh... (laughs) For trimming and olive mowing and all that stuff. And she got livid. Uh She said, I am from here and I'm aware of that. And I said, well, ma'am, our guys can't get out of here and mow in the rain. Yeah. It'll mess up the grounds and everything. And she said, don't tell me, I know. <laughs> and I, 
I looked, and I looked up at her husband, and her husband just kind of shrugged his shoulders like, sorry, bud. You know? and I said, he was probably just feeling relieved <laughs> that he wasn't the hurt target. Somebody else was getting yeah. beat up. And I told her, I said, ma'am, I am so... In a situation like that, mm. you know immediately there is no win. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. You can't win. I said, ma'am, I am so sorry. I'm going to get the head of grounds, and I'm going to talk to him, and I promise you, as soon as we can, we're going to start cutting this grass. <laughs> and she looked at me. What a simpleton. She looked at me, and she said, good, that's all I wanted. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't like, say that. That was it? Yeah, that was it. And I, I didn't say, you know, we're going to cut the grass tomorrow. Right, right. You know, let me go get him. We'll start cutting this area right now. Yeah, yeah. I just said as soon as we can. Uh-huh. That's all she wanted. And she just left as happy as a lark. But, boy, she got mad there in a minute. Oh. I, you know, sometimes. And, and I had to laugh. And, and as soon as they pulled out, I started laughing and shaking my head. Yeah, you know, that's, sometimes you're right. It's you never can win in a scenario like no, that. No, no, no. Um, sometimes at my office, people will tell a customer something, and then they'll have me repeat it because I just sound sweeter. <laughs> and then it, it's so funny because they'll calm right down. They'll be oh, like, yeah. oh, okay, I get it now. I'm like, <laughs> so this is what we're going to do. I just, <laughs> you know, real high pitch and very syrupy sweet. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I, I imagine that in your role, people kind of show up looking for a fight sometimes. Well, see, in, on the cemetery side, more especially than the funeral side, because the funeral side, you know, you're indoors. Mm-hmm. It's temperature controlled. You got music. Mm-hmm. And all of the guys are all clean. Yeah. And they smell good. Mm-hmm. And they're all dressed up. Looking good. Uh-huh. Uh, people are coming in, bringing food and hugging on you and patting you and all yeah. that stuff, telling you how sorry they are that mama's dead. Mm-hmm. Well, then the cemetery side takes mama out and we bury her. Uh-huh. Well, that pisses people off. What What do they think's going to happen with her? Well, the, what, what they're struggling with Or is it just like the this, fu- finality of it, maybe? It is. It's the finality of it, but what they're struggling with is this. Mama was 350 pounds overweight. Right. She smoked for the last 40 years. Right. And all she ate were cheeseburgers. (laughs) Welcome to the South. (laughs) That's how we roll. (laughs) Well, you can't be mad at Mama because that's bad form. Yeah, you don't get mad at dead people. No, that's bad form. So you got to find somebody else to be mad at. Mm -hmm. And it's the guy that buried your Mama because if it weren't for him burying her, then you could still see her. And everybody would still be bringing you food and Ugh. patting you on the back and telling you how good it is to see you. Blech. So that's what the deal is. Mm-hmm. People walk in the door getting mad because we buried Mama. Yeah. And and you know it takes a little it takes a little while for them to get over that. Yeah. And then they get to be all right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, but they're during the first I don't know three or four months. It gets really bad, and depending on the age of the of the person that died, mm-hmm. uh, we have people whose teenagers, young adults, or whatever died mm-hmm. uh, three and four years ago, uh-huh. and they're still pissed. Yeah, because it cannot be my son's fault, right? That he overdosed overdosed on heroin. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's got to be your fault because you buried him. Yeah. That sounds logical. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> and and you know that going in. So mm-hmm. a lot of times that anger gets stupider and stupider and you just sit there in amazement shaking your head. Yeah. And then when they leave you can't help but kinda of laugh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like what what's something that really kind of tickled you where I, I've had instances with some of my customers where they're so angry, yeah. my automatic response is to giggle. <laughs> and that is not... Like a nervous giggle. Yeah, like a nervous giggle uh, type of thing. Yeah. But at the same time, it's kind of like, why are you so upset about this? Like, do you not have anything else going on in your life right now? But <laughs> well, <laughs> anywho, do you have any examples, uh, an additional example of somebody who really like shine their, shine their booty? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, what happens is, in this happens more in the South than it does in the North mm -hmm. or the West. Mm -hmm. uh, most Southern funeral homes have uh, what they call a lounge mm -hmm. to where churches or family members bring food. Yes. And they set it out and... Uh, during visitation, mm -hmm. they'll go in and they'll eat a plate of food. Mm -hmm. After the funeral, they'll go in, they'll eat a plate of food. There's mm -hmm. all kinds of cakes and mm -hmm. cookies and all that sort of stuff. So they had all these these uh, delights yeah. laid out in this lounge. Uh -huh. And uh, so everybody goes to the funeral mm -hmm. and they come back to the lounge and they're all eating. They all eat right. and all this sort of stuff. So, let's say it's six o'clock, uh -huh. and it's they're through, they're full. The funeral's over. Mama's buried. They're stuffed to the gills, and there's still food, food everywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, what's supposed to happen is the sisters of the church are supposed to clean all that mess up, right? Okay, and uh, in this particular instance, they left. Oh, everybody just left. And left all their stuff? Yeah, left all the food out and uh -huh. all this sort of stuff. So the funeral directors picked what food they wanted to save yeah. and put it in the refrigerator uh -huh. and uh, left all the rest of the stuff out. And there's, nothing, talking, there's nothing like good, solid stranger food. Oh, oh Ew, uh, and they But they left out cakes and pies uh -huh. and all this sort of stuff. So the lady, lady God bless her heart, the lady that cleans the funeral home, uh -huh. comes in the next morning. She comes in about 7, 7.30, something like that to get it uh -huh. all cleaned up before people start showing up. So she walks in the door, and I forgot what the people's name were, Gil or something like that. Uh, and she, I was there, and she said, well, what about the Gill family? And I said, well, it was yesterday. And she said, they're, they're buried? I said, oh, yeah, we buried them. Uh, everything's done. It's done. She said, oh, okay. So she goes in there, she cleans up the lounge. Right. Throws all that food away. Uh -huh. Throws all the cakes and pies and all that stuff. Throws it all away. Takes it to the dumpster and dumps it and all that stuff. Scrubs, mops the floor, all this kind of stuff. About, about 10 30, the church women show back up. Oh, no. To get all the food that they had left. Oh, no. And it all got thrown away. And you talk about mad now. You talk to little old church women when they eat all their good food that they've been thinking about all night oh, gets thrown away. Oh, man. You talk about pissed off women. Oh, my God. They were pissed off. So they wanted her fired. They wanted... They wanted you were kidding. No, they wanted her fired. and, and That is so Christian of them, ain't it? it? Was. Oh, Lord. So... Uh, for whatever reason, I was there, and she came, the cleaning lady came and got me, and she said, these women are mad, and they won't talk to you. I said, they won't talk to me about what? They said, you just need to talk to her. So, talk to them. So, I walked in there, and you know how when a group of women are mad? Oh, I've been one of those women in a group, <laughs> and angry. They, and they all jump in at oh, once. Oh, you start feeding off of each other's and, hate. <laughs> and they're just, each one of them jumping on you. And you don't, I mean, you just, it's, it's kind of like, like a bunch of piranha <laughs> on a bull, you know, just <laughs> eating you down to the bone. And uh, so I told him, I said, ma'am, I said, the president of the company's not here yet. Uh -huh. He gets here about 11 today. Uh -huh. So if you would... He'll be here in 30 minutes. If you would, talk to him about it, and I'm sure he'll make you happy. The only thing that'll make us happy is for you to fire that woman. That, so God bless this poor woman's heart. Was she crying? Was she upset? She was up, yeah, she was really upset. Oh, my gosh. And I was telling her, you know, just calm down, calm down. Yeah. So uh, the president of the company shows up. I mean, they're but not going to come back and check to see if she's fired like a week <laughs> later, right? No, no, no. So, so uh she, uh, they jump on him like they did me. Just mm -hmm. da -da 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 -da. And I warned him. See, nobody warned me. Yeah. I walked in flat footed. Oh, that's the worst. And, uh, but I warned him. So they did. They all jumped in and he had an idea how to calm them down. Uh -huh. But he calmed them down. And then the one said, well, now, 
are you going to fire her today? And he said, no, ma'am, I'm not. Oh, it started all over again. Then they wanted to see the owner. Uh huh. So then they all jumped on the owner. And the owner doesn't play that stuff. Yeah, well, what did he say? He said, uh, ladies, this is my funeral home. We're going to run it the way I want to. She's trying to clean this place up from y'all leaving this big mess. Uh-huh. And if y'all don't want that, then from now on, make sure you take your food home. Uh-huh. Well, they all went out. Their lower lip was sticking out far enough to put a ketchup bottle on oh, it. You my know, they're all pounding. <laughs> and, uh, but I, if I'd have said that to them, they, the owner would have run me off. Yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, the president was scared to say anything because he didn't want to lose a burial or a yeah. funeral or anything. Yeah. And the owner is rich, so he didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, you, situations like that, after it's over or you step aside or you step back, yeah. you just laugh, you yeah. know. And I don't do nervous laugh. Uh-huh. I just laugh because it's stupid. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, but Yours that, is more like a I don't give a shit laugh. Yeah, uh. exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, I mean, if these people think that uh, they're going to upset me, they're wrong. They're wrong. Yeah, they're wrong. I got I, plenty of stuff to get upset about, and it ain't <laughs> stuff from work. <laughs> no, uh, no. I've been married for forty five years. I know upset. <laughs> <laughs> Beach Too Sandy, Water Too Wet is a comedy podcast featuring brother and sister duo Alex and Christina as they recap dramatic readings of one-star reviews written by real people with not-so-real problems. Whether it's a bar's no-throw-up policy, a barista who's just too friendly, or a school psychologist's fashion sense, prepare for equal amounts of laughter and eye-rolling. Listen to Beach Too Sandy, Water Too Wet on Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, or any of your favorite podcast apps. You can also find them on all social media platforms at Beach Too Sandy. Okay, so we have a viewer question. Yeah. Or not viewer. No. Listener. 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 There you go. Would they be a podcastee? Oh. If we're podcasters. Probably. They're podcastees. It's a new thing. It's official. Okay. (laughs) Let's see if that makes it to Wikipedia. Okay, yeah, I like it. I like it. So our our new podcastee Uh called in and left us a a voicemail. Uh And it really makes my blood boil. Just wait and see. I think it'll make you guys super angry, too. Hang on. Hi, Katie. Hi, Mr. Danny. This is Steve Owens with Fascination Street Podcast. I would send you a promo for my show, but y'all do enough for the podcasting community. You don't need to play mine. I just wanted to reach out and ask a question. About 23 or 24 years ago, when my son was, I don't know, two, his best friend drowned in a pool. That kid was also like two. And I ended up being the pallbearer at the funeral for this two-year-old baby. The parents were of a specific religion that I was wholly unfamiliar with. And the preacher or pastor or minister or whatever they call that position in this particular religion, when he was doing his sermon or speaking or whatever, he said that the reason that that two-year-old boy died was because he had sinned enough in his young life that God took him off of the planet. And not everybody who was at that funeral was a member of that particular religion. For instance, the mother of that child. And as you could imagine, she lost her mind when that was said. Anyway, my question, I guess, is a Mr. Danny, or as you were referred to in, I think, episode two, Mr. Tommy, Has there been anything that's been said at a funeral that just irritated or pissed you off so bad you couldn't stand it? Love the show. I found it a couple of months ago, and I have told everybody I know about it. Thank you so much for doing this show and sharing your stories, Mr. Danny, and for keeping everything upbeat and cheery, Katie. Thanks a lot, guys. Ugh. I mean, as a mom, that makes me, like, throw up in my mouth a little bit. That is just horrible. Well, the, the Although, him saying I keep it uh, fun, I did like that comment. You like that? 
Yeah, but that, all the other stuff was like, oh, it made my <laughs> stomach hurt. Well, everybody's different. Uh, when my kids, when you kids were little, it was almost impossible for me to do a little kid burial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then as you became adolescents, the same thing, mm-hmm. older, the same thing. So whatever age my children are, it bothers me to bury somebody like that. Yeah. Uh, so like super young and beautiful people? Yeah, yeah that's what mm-hmm. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I have heard a lot I've seen a lot that bothered me mm-hmm. uh, as everybody knows religion is the number one reason for murder oh really oh, oh yeah. yeah I guess that is true yeah. yeah it's the number one reason for murder I don't believe what you believe so I'm gonna kill you mm-hmm. uh, uh, or God spoke to me and told me to kill you yeah so I mean there's a lot of lunacy around religion. Mm-hmm. It can and, be very uh, highly misconstrued and there's there's zealots in every le- religion. Well, too, every book, every religious book, mm-hmm. every one of them is open to interpretation. That's true. You mm-hmm. know, right now, we're all upset about the Muslims. Oh, they're terrible people. Uh-huh. If you talk to 99.9% of the Muslims, yeah. they're just like us. Lovely humans. Lovely human beings. Well, I'm not Mr. Well, right. anyway. And the, lovely yeah. humans like me? Like you. Question like mark? You. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, but there are some that are zealots mm-hmm. that want to fly airplanes into buildings or they right. want to beat their own daughter to death or, oh. you know, stupid Whoa. stuff, but it's all cloaked. In religion. Right. Uh, there's not a lot that really pisses me off mm-hmm. that outside of messing with my family. Right, you know? right. Uh, but I have seen a lot that I just shake my head, I disagree with. And I say to myself, how can these people be a part of this religion? Yeah. Why, you know, where are the scales going to fall off of their eyes? And they see yeah. what real world is going on here. Yeah. But yeah. I have seen things. Uh, I have seen, I don't guess you, uh, a congregate. I've seen congregates, not often, but some several times over the last 38 years, 39 years, mm-hmm. uh, stand up mm-hmm. and argue with the speaker. Really? Yes. In a yeah. scenario where they were saying something like, maybe the speaker was saying something negative, or were they standing up and saying something, spouting something negative? No, no they, they were arguing about the fact, like, for instance, Steve was talking about this character, and he didn't know what kind of religion he was, right. and he didn't know if you call him a priest, a preacher, or whatever. Right. And... Uh, he was saying that this little two-year-old child had sinned so much that God Ugh. took him off the earth. Just makes my stomach turn. Yeah, really. But uh, what happened in several occasions where people just pop to their feet and say, well, he's two years old. How could he possibly have sinned? He's not at the age of accountability. Right. And, you know, all this sort of thing. Uh, and then that always leads to a religious argument. And there's, it's, it's a no-win situation. There's no one, no one, I don't care who you are, there's no one can re- win in a religious argument. Mm-hmm. I, th- mm-hmm. I think it was Abraham Lincoln said that a man's mind changed against his will is of the same opinion still. <laughs> so that's very you know, true. If we argue and you make me look stupid out in public, right? And I acquiesce or I surrender my argument, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean I change my mind. Yeah, that just means you uh, didn't want to cause a scene. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But I've seen seen several uh, that get up and generally in those situations, it kind of uh, crumbles down into cuss fights. Really? Yeah. yeah. When they stand up and they start arguing about religion, 
it always winds up with somebody calling somebody a son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah. You know? And generally, it's a preacher doing it. Oh, you know? no. Oh, goodness. <laughs> but, uh, or whatever they're called. Yeah. Uh, there are enough Protestant uh, denominations, uh, sects, or whatever, mm -hmm. that have these way out kind of ways of doing things. Yeah. You know? uh, but what makes them happy is a good thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if handling a rattlesnake makes you happy, grab a hold of one. Yeah. You know, if drinking poison makes you happy, get a gallon of it. You know, <laughs> just get real happy. Yeah. But don't infringe on what makes me happy. Yeah. You know, I'm not into poison that much. Yeah. Liquor, yeah. Poison, no. Uh, I, you know, rattlesnakes, I'm not a big fan of. Yeah, not for me. It's but, not for me. Uh, I'm not going to pick one up and swirl it around my head. Yeah. That doesn't make me right and you wrong. Right. It doesn't make you wrong and me right. Yeah. Uh, so I have found a lot of times in situations like that, it's best to just keep your mouth shut. And like my granddaddy used to say, mm -hmm. just shut up and let them die stupid. <laughs> so I think those are amazing words. Just think how like lovely our planet would be if you would just shut up shut and up. let them be stupid. Yeah. You know, I mean, what? Why do they really care about our opinion anyway? Yeah, well, I hope true. the folks on this show do because they listen. Well, this this but we're not trying to, This particular yeah. instance, they're. They're enthralled with our opinion. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, right now, in little hovels around the country, <laughs> they're going, oh, did you hear that? <laughs> well, we are just, um, I think that's a great way to kind of wrap up. So, quick reminder. Yeah? We are on social media everywhere. Oh, wow. Yes. But I think my favorite thing is Instagram. So I think, is President Trump's. No, that he likes Twitter. Oh, he does. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got all of mixed up. I, I'm not so good at the Twitter, but if you want to uh, send us your question, like Steve did, which was an awesome question, um, email us. Just shoot us an email. Go to our website, www.caskettsandcocktails.com. And if you guys haven't noticed, we have kind of changed up our release schedule. So we are doing it every other release on Mondays. Um, the reason why is we both work full time and try to do this too. And, and we love this. And so we just wanted to kind of keep it fresh and keep it fun for you guys. So we are shifting to the every other Monday. Um, Mr. Danny had the flu at his house, so we skipped this past week. Fortunately, it wasn't me. It was your mother. I know, but you were... I mean, God bless her. I know, but you were scaring me. I didn't want to have to record with you and, and <laughs> set to my family. <laughs> yeah, I'm like typhoid Mary. Yeah, I don't need any of that happening. But um, we will be back on track, and I'm really excited about our format, doing it every other week. I think we're getting more questions in well, and that sort of thing, so also, it's really fun. Also, I've got a little bit of advice for folks that call in like Steve did. Yeah. They stand a greater chance of us really going on if they compliment us a lot like Steve did. <laughs> I love compliments. I know. I do, too. I like compliments, yeah. too. Uh -huh. But we do, even if you don't want to compliment us. I'm not listening. Well, I'm, I still listen to them. Uh -oh. um, but call us. Leave us a voicemail. Shoot us an email. Do like Steve. Record a quick question and email it over. Um, we love hearing from you guys. And this show is successful because of you guys. So be sure to follow us on social media. Um, like our posts. Comment. Send us questions. We love to hear from our guests or our podcastees. Pos I, see, I forgot it already. I podcastees. Uh -huh. Ah, yeah. I can hardly wait for that. It, it, will they like credit me when it goes into Wikipedia? Maybe. Invented by? Yeah, I think that might be like more Urban Dictionary. Do I get Do you it? even know what that Urban Dictionary? I'm going to have to show you. Is that like Webster's? Um, kind of. Kind of? But good. dirtier. Do, you get, huh? <laughs> <laughs> do, I, do I get like money? I don't think so. Oh, well then screw that. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thank you again for listening this week. We love coming to you every other week. And remember, we'll, we'll be, be the, the last ones, ones to let, let you down. down. 
Hey, Daddy. Hey. Did you know that we have a sponsor for this awesome podcast? I do know that. You know what's really awesome? Uh Uh-uh. It's Killer Trace. Really? They're so cool. Well, let me tell you a story about that. Oh. I gave a waitress at uh, the restaurant that I eat at one of our cards Uh and talked to her about the podcast. She said she loves that type of podcast. She said, my favorite is like true crime. She said, I just took a subscription to Killer Trace. You're kidding. I said, are you kidding me? I said, that's our sponsor. And she said, well, I didn't know it. I already ordered it. And she said, I'm so excited. I said, well, when you get it, you will love it. Yeah, it is so cool. I got yeah. our first box, and it I mean, it feels so real. Yeah. You get case files in the mail. I'm, you get evidence. You There were even, like, crumpled up Post-it pads on your folders. It was so cool. I am totally obsessed. I feel like I should have been a detective, but I don't think I'm brave enough. No, I tell you, you don't like blood too much. No, no. Uh-uh. But Killer Trace is gonna get is the real deal. So you guys don't be like the waitress and in order without giving a shout out to caskets and cocktails. Our code is C A C two zero one eight. Again, that's C A C two zero one eight. And we have a link to Killer Trace in the bio of this podcast. So guys. Be sure to check it out. Right, Daddy? That's exactly right. And never forget that we'll be the last ones to let you down. That's true.